Hi everyone, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. Our topic today I hope will inspire you and excite you um, and the title enough says it, five fabulous ways to reinvent your life and create body confidence after 60. The title is the article by Astrid Longhurst and this article just inspired me so much because it isn't just about body image, it's about living in your 60s in a, in a new way. You know, we haven't got many role models in our 60s anymore that are, um, you know, well known. We've, you know, looking back, we were much more ageist in the past and it's taken a generation, I think, to actually start to accept that older women are in a category that is unique and strong and um, has much to offer. Um, that We're doing amazing things in our 60s. You're doing amazing things. And whether it's something that you, you know, is visible, that you have a business or you, you, know, you have a website or whatever you do, or whether you just live your life in an adventurous, vivacious and, and honest way, that's setting a role model for your grandchildren, for your children and for the future. So don't uh, hold back. Now, Astrid um, is a beautiful woman and she actually wrote this article from her own experience. And she, you know, is very effusive about how women today need to believe in themselves. You know, women in their 60s need to not look back and try to look for role models who will support their own uh, passions and desires, but just do your own thing and be your own person and know that you have got a lot of living to do and that your dreams are all possible. And I just love her energy and her um, enthusiasm and inspiration. She makes a quote by Wayne Dyer, who is a man, of course, and but he actually says it in, in clear words, which is don't die with the music inside of you. You know, make sure that you live your life with the passion and the purpose that you that you you know that you know you need it you need to be happy and fulfilled and that's why you are here you know that's what your mission in life I mean of course we've all faced loss and sadness and uh, those kind of points in the road those forks in the road where we went one way as opposed to the other and may always be you know, wondering how it would have turned out the other way you know we know what works and what doesn't work you know, it's, we know the outcomes that can happen in the best scenario, and we also know what can happen in the worst scenario, but it, it, it hasn't prevented us from going for it and for trying. You know, that's the thing I think that's most, most important is that we must ask ourselves powerful, reflective questions about how to do this, because as I said, we don't have a lot of role models, um, you know, right now, our age, who are doing the things that we know we can do. So here are the five wisdom access questions <laughs> that, um, that Astrid outlines. And I think they're really fun. And, she, and the, the little, you know, the, the tip is here, be open to the answers that you uh, over, that you that come out of this conversation with yourself. Uh, sit quietly, you can do this in a in a serious way. Don't just kind of try, try to do the dishes while you're thinking it. Give yourself some time to sit down and reflect and, you know, just and linger, you know, linger on the answers because these are the answers that are going to help you to shape um, a confidence in yourself. Um, be open to the answers and they may come from um, books or from movies or from something that you've seen or that you've experienced in your life. Um, you, you'll know when they come because as Astro says, they will charge you up. They will make you feel energized. You'll feel like, yes, that's so exciting. That's that's what I want to do. That's that's my my passion. That's that's what's going to guide me into this um, this place where I'm living the, a true life, and the sense of aha, uh -huh. you know, who am I apart from the roles that I play? Good question. Yeah. And this is a hard one because the roles that we play are the ones that ground us. They're the ones that keep us sane, you know, that we know that this is what we do and we do it well. And we may be a mother or a grandmother or a worker. We can be all these things. But I think getting to the point in your 60s and 70s where you're asking beyond that, you know, what's more than the role that I play? It's scary. It can be scary. So here's the things that um, Astra talks about. First is to write a journal. Now, a self journal is a little bit different than, you know, it's, it's like a, a map of the future. And it's an exercise to turn your brain into a time machine. So where you take yourself forward and look at what you, how you see yourself in the, in the future, well, how you desire to feel, what your intentions are, what you think, what you'd like to be doing in the future. Just write them down. It doesn't matter how strange they sound or how 
unrealistic they are or in, in quotes because everything's realistic. Everything can be done to some degree. I mean, you may say, I want to be queen of the universe or I want to be, you know, I want to live in a million dollar house on a hill in Greece. You, you could say all those things, but it's unlikely that they'll happen. But at least you'll get a sense of who you are. And then start this journal by saying, every day today, I see myself as, and then just be grounded in the present with that vision for the future. It's really, really important. Um, and take a deep breath. Um, unwrap your legs, Margaret, because I do this when I do my videos. I sit here with wrap my legs. So relax, you've got to relax. It doesn't come when you're stressed. <laughs> it just doesn't. So take a deep breath and just ask yourself, is everything okay? Is everything okay now? And if it's not, do a little, dig a little deeper. So listen and hear. The second thing is to listen and hear what your body says. It's, it's important because your body gives you signals. It gives you a conversation. It gives you alerts. And it can be something that's maybe painful. It could be chronic pain. It could be some kind of discomfort. But listen to what it says. Build a trusting relationship with your body, Astrid says. And that's the thing, I think, is if you build that trusting relationship with yourself, um, everything it says is, is true. Everything is real to you. And I think that's important. Um, another thing she says, which I, I like this one, and, and if you read the article by Astrid, you'll understand why I like this particular point, is that shake things up. <laughs> shake them up. Do things that you've never done before. You know, do things that you feel are, you know, worthy of you and things that you feel are exciting to you. Um, visit a new place. Change how you spend your day. Go somewhere that you've never been before. You know, do something that you've never done before. Um, try something um, experimental. Um, what color would you never wear? Wear it. What jewelry would you never, or do you hardly ever wear? What book would you, would, what kind of magazine or book would you never read? Go ahead and read it. Do, shake it up a bit. Do something that's completely out of your character. And so that your nearest friend say, might say, well, that's not like you at all. Say, that's great. That's what I, I was hoping to do today. That was my intention. And the final thing that she talks about is, you know, embracing, appreciating and loving the journey so far. You know, say thank you to the different versions of yourself. I love this, that statement, because if you go back to your teenage years or to your early 20s or your 30s, thank that person for what they brought to you, for what they, what they did, for the, the chances that they took, for the jobs they, they took on, the, the people that they associated with, the marriage, marriages, the children, all those people. Thank the mother, thank the grandmother that you are. Thank you, thank for what you've done in your, all across the whole spectrum of your life because that's where the power is. You were amazing. You did things all along your life that gave you such a great uh, substance and, um, and character character, which was really based on values. And when I actually look back at my childhood, I think that the values I had as a child, um, kindness, compassion, uh, being creative, uh, you know, sharing, all those things that I really felt were like important, loving myself, uh, were always with me, always with me. And nothing is ever wasted, says Astrid. It's all part of the extraordinary process of becoming truly, authentically who we are. So thank you, Astrid, for this article. Thank you for listening and being here. Um, how would you say the, that you've reinvented and changed yourself over your life? And how would you say that that's you know, created a, a new you? How have you changed? Where were some of those milestones, some of those things that you did that you didn't expect? Do you shake things up? What, do you wear funky clothes? Do you wear different colors? Do you go places? Do you travel somewhere that you might not always have thought you might wanted to? You know, I think it's all part of this journey and I, th and I appreciate you being on mine with me. Um, I'm always by your side and I, and I believe in all of you so much. Please take really good care of yourself and know that, you know, whatever you, wherever you are on this journey, whatever part of the, the, the roadmap that, that she talks about that you're on, to love it and to embrace it and to know that you can change, you can, you can tweak it, you can do things to make it uh, different and better and that nothing is ever, ever wasted. Live fully in the present to create your dreams and embrace those dreams with all your heart. You're, in, you're responsible for that. That's your job for today.
Take really good care, everybody. Have a fabulous day. Know that you are loved and appreciated here. And I really do hope that you have a fabulous uh, life wherever you choose to spend it, however you choose to spend it. And embrace that beautiful, authentic human being that loves to be pampered and embraced and accepted. You are loved. Take really good care, everybody. All, the, all my best. Bye-bye.